Hello everyone, this is Andrea, the Girl Plus Paper, and I'm coming to you today as part of the creative design team, and we are doing a series entitled Creative Ways to Use Specialty Papers. So here's my project that we will be making today. I began building my layout upon two bases of wisteria layered with lilac cardstock, and I decided that I was going to pull in this dreamy holographic paper because it worked so well with the photos that I was going to scrapbook. Now, these are photos of the what's dubbed the purple wall at Disney World in the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. And my family is one of millions that take photos there each year. And um, so I wanted this layout to be completely purple. And I thought the Dreamy Holographic paper was going to show different shades or hues of purple as it moved and danced through the light. So that was my inspiration to begin this project. So I used a Cricut cut and cut the holographic paper and a white daisy layer out of a tiny little heart from the Everyday Moments Cricut collection by Close to My Heart. Love the way that the holographic paper cuts on the Cricut. So I've blown this up into an 11 by a half by 11 and a half heart. And instead of being tiny, made it big so it fit my page. And I'm gluing it down with some of our Tombow glue right now. I really wanted the emphasis to be on that geometric shaped heart because it mimicked the wall so beautifully. And as you will notice, the holographic paper is going to pick up different shades of purple depending on the lighting and how I move in the shadows. And I think you get a little bit of that there. I wanted you to notice that. So it's a lot of fun to play with. But it will generally pick up more of the colors that it's being placed with. So in this case, the lilac. And um, just thought it was a good fit for this project. Now, what I wanted to do was to show you some ways to use this holographic paper. So I have grabbed one of our tri-blend markers and I have cut this little tab out of our tags and tabs thin cut sets. And I am making really long strokes with my marker. This is an alcohol based marker and I wanted to show you that you could color nicely onto the holographic paper. So here I've done some long strokes and I've colored my tab from that Tags and Tags thin cut set. And we are going to set that aside. I think that was a dusty purple color marker. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. We're going to set that aside to dry, but I wanted to show you that you could change the holographic paper's color um, artificially by coloring over it with, with that tri-blend marker. And so we're going to set that aside to dry and we're going to continue to work on this layout. So here I have a photo of my husband and I and I just want to give it some um, dimension. So you're going to notice that I put some foam tape uh, under my photo and then again I end up putting some eventually under the photo mat itself. I should mention that the photo mat that you see here and the other three that are going to be on the other page were all cut from the same image collection out of the Everyday Moments um, image set. So now I think this is called Strokes of an Artist, um, something like that. I'm, you know, I'm drawing a blank once again. Um, this stamp set, I just liked the fact that I needed something to create some more visual interest on my page. I want a monochromatic look. So I'm just gonna move my heart over and I'm going to put down a few of these um, you know, it's almost as if somebody had taken a watercolor brush and just gone over the page. But this is a little bit neater because you're just using some ink. Decide that one is not enough. I want a little bit more, so I'm going to make it a little wider by adding a second. And then I lift up that block and I decide, you know what, I'm going to try to lay down just a minimal amount of ink and use second generation stamping. And so it's very hard to see in the video, but it's faintly there. And now I figured it's time that I can go ahead and adhere down this heart to the page. I'm happy with the amount of ink that was laid down onto that lilac cardstock. So once again, I'm just using that Tombow glue. I love it because it doesn't warp the paper, the green one. Um, and it gives me a moment to move around. I'm just centering it so I have about an eighth of an inch edge all around that heart. And we're gonna start building this page even more. 
Now, um, as we do, I'm going to show you a few more ways that I have used the holographic paper. Um, so I'm going to anchor this photo down and then, um, I think you're going to be interested to see different ways that you can use the holographic paper. I was really experimenting to see what would look best. I even tried putting some liquid glass on a piece and, um, you'll see what I ended up with in just a moment here. Um, I like that that little heart cut out on the photo frame actually went through onto the holographic paper. So here's another way to use the holographic paper. I've taken it and I've cut it out of a thin cut from the tags and tabs and I've run it through one of our close to my heart embossing folders. So that's something else that's really fun that you can do and it works beautifully running that holographic paper through embossing folders. And here we go. Here's that tab that I just colored momentarily, you know, just a few moments ago. And um, you can see it's not getting on my fingers and it just creates a darker purple, but it still has the holographic properties. So that's something else you can do. So, so far we've done the Cricut and then die cut and embossed and colored and lots of fun. So um, back to the layout, I'm just doing tone on tone stamping. This is our August 2020 stamp of the month that I'm using here. And it's this whimsical little flower set and it's so much fun to use. And I wanted elements on the page that were there, but just subtle, just subtle. Um, because I wanted these flowers that I have uh, stamped for you to be the star of the show. And let me explain these flowers. I wanted to stamp on the holographic paper. So again, I experimented with a few different types of ink to determine what would be best, what would work best on the holographic paper. And I found that, um, although I'd probably say intense black is my favorite ink, it did not work so well for this. I went ahead and used our archival ink and um, stamped onto the holographic paper and I loved it. It dried, you know, fairly quickly. It didn't smudge on my fingers. And as I was fussy cutting and holding those flowers, my fingers remained clean. So. Um, I loved the look of the embellishments that I could create just by stamping in the archival black ink onto holographic paper. And that's just opened up a world of possibility in my mind. Um, lots of fun, right? So this was all about experimenting with what I could accomplish with the holographic paper. And I was so happy with what I came up with. Now, um, I have three of my kids' photos here. The fourth one, I think, was over at Starbucks on Main Street, which is nothing unusual for Isabella. Um, so she was either shopping or, or getting some Starbucks while we were taking these pictures. But no need to worry. She's featured in a lot of my layouts because she loves taking photos. I'm, I'm really blessed that the girls really, really love taking photos. Eddie, not so much, but that's okay. So now I'm stamping some more of these splotches of color down on the layout. And um, you'll see that I'm putting down some more tone on tone flowers. I just loosely placed those photos down so I, I knew generally where I had to create more background interest on this layout. And um, you know, I think that the placement of the photos is pretty good. So I'm going and I put the two girls photos down flat, but I thought, my son's photo needed to pop up just to separate those photos. They didn't look like one big photo. And um, here's another way that you can use these thin cuts. They, cr they create, I should say, another way that you can use the holographic paper is with thin cuts to create the most perfect titles. And you're not going to run out of a letter because you're going to be able to thin cut again and again. So you can see I have three L's that are going into the words purple wall and um you know you can you can just keep cutting as many letters as you need to create whatever title and that was something else that i thought was great to do with this holographic paper it is stunning it really is um you know an eye grabber attention getter and will make your layouts pop especially if you took the time to put foam tape behind all of those letters it would be fabulous so um here I am just placing down some of those flowers because I'm, I'm pretty committed. They're going there. But this purple wall, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fuss with it for a moment or two. I have decided to go with the purple wall down on the bottom here. And I'm using some of our silver loose sequins 
some of those have a purpley hue to those as well. Um, there's a few in there. So I picked out some of those with the silver. And just placing some sequins just to dress up the layout and move my eye and, and fill some, you know, some white space, so to speak. And I really like the way that it turned out. You'll notice that I always put those sequins into triangles of three because I think that that moves your eye, you know, appropriately. And I like to move them up and down the, the page uh, for an unexpected twist. So I'm just finishing up with those. And here is our purple holographic paper. So just wanted to mention, again, Cricut, the thin cuts, the markers, stamping with archival black. Um, there's so many things that you can do with that holographic paper. Get yourself a pack and play with it. You will not be disappointed. Now that we finished looking at a few ways that you can use holographic paper, I would encourage you to hop along and see what the other very talented members of the creative design team have in store for you with their specialty paper videos. Their links can be found down in my video's description. Before you go, I would love it if you would consider becoming a subscriber and remember to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects. Thank you and have a creative day.